Oh wait, no longer greatness has arrived. Welcome to episode 280 of the Trophy Room, a PlayStation podcast made by the players for the players. I'm your host, Joseph, a.k.a. Mr. Bad Bit, and it is here where me and my best friend Kyle talk about the latest, the greatest in all things PlayStation. Of course, this week, we're talking all about The Last of Us Part 1's gameplay officially revealed. We're going to be talking about that secret Black Panther open world game that's in the works by EA. Oh, boy. Aspire's KOTOR is delayed indefinitely. GTA 6 leaks. Square Enix possibly being bought by PlayStation. And golly gee, so much more. But with all that said, with all that out of the way, the greatest co-host whoever is, whoever will be, Mr. Kyle Stevenson. How are you, sir? I'm I'm doing okay. It was yeah. a long day. I realized during the intro for if anyone doesn't watch the video version, when you. Joe does his uh, his intro, I usually bob my head back and forth. Yeah. I've been dealing with such a sore and painful neck, which I didn't tell you about. Uh-oh. I must have slept wrong or something, but from like my shoulder blade up into my jaw, all the way down my neck, it just is so tight and to- so s- sore and. Yeah. It's so painful. So me doing my head back and forth, I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> I gotta stop that." <laughs> oh no, I'm good. getting older. <laughs> oh no. Uh, but other than that, though, yeah, I I, I want to you know get a little hype at the beginning of the show. Okay, y'all, that Wakanda Forever trailer. Oh, am me. I right? <laughs> oh my god, I've never been moved by a trailer more. Every <laughs> single time I've watched that, and yes, I've yes. watched that over 30, 35 times. Yes. Yeah. I cry the moment Angela Bassett starts speaking. Yep. Yep. Oh my well, god. That movie is going to be something special. Ryan Coogler is amazing. He doesn't miss. I no. I got very emotional the first time, second time, third time watching. I'm like, this movie's going to change me as an individual. I hope. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That looks so good. In the John Wick trailer, I haven't seen that one yet. Honest to God, Kyle. Just you and me, not even the audience. Yeah. Uh-huh. That is the best teaser trailer I've ever seen. Ooh, okay. Like, that is a minute of just pure and adulterated John Wick violence. <laughs> and it is Kid, so good. Like, I, I'm what I'm going to say might sound sacrilegious. Please. Can they show anything that is new and surprising from John Wick? I feel like we've seen him do it oh, all. Oh, yeah, that is sacrilegious. <laughs> you re- you're a real son of a bitch. <laughs> Yeah. But then again, I will eat my words just like I did with Top Gun Maverick, which I saw over the weekend. God bless. Man, that whoo oh boy. Ooh-wee. What a movie. I know. I know. But listen, not all good things, you know, last. Um no. You know, listen, I feel like 2020 to 2022 has taken a lot from us. Yeah. One thing that I think is one of the biggest casualties. And I just need to stress this here, right, right, right uh-huh. here, right now. Uh-huh. Rest in peace, the Choco Taco. Kyle, you remember how I said beforehand you might take a week oh, away from my no. Is this, from my hosting? You countdown? don't like the Choco Taco? I'm not a nut fan. Oh, uh, okay. Well, that's fine. If okay. you're not a, I'll allow that. I, am, I appreciate and I love the novelty of the Choco Taco. I'm yeah. always like, man, that's super cool. I love that. <laughs> it's but awesome. I just, I just don't like nuts, so I n- I've never actually eaten one. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, okay, here, here's another question for you. Ice cream tr- truck rip. I'm sorry, what? The ice cream truck. Oh, uh, you said ice cream. I thought, oh, I, I? Heard, <laughs> I, thought I heard that. Yeah. Whoops. Uh, ice cream truck rolls around when you're a wee lad. Yeah. Rip the ice cream truck. Yeah. What is the thing that you're getting? Oh, uh, as a kid, yeah. I got those character uh, popsicle things. Same. <laughs> yeah. It, I got the, like, I always would Mine get was the a turtle. Okay. Turtle ones were fantastic. Yeah. I would get the SpongeBob one more times than not. Mm-hmm. And that was such, um, like, that's the most deceitful package. You 100%. Think- it's all lemon-flavored ice. It's- and the gumballs, there's reasons why I have chips in my teeth. <laughs> but, like, it, it looks like, you know when people are like, I found Jesus Christ in this, like, grilled cheese <laughs> <laughs> sandwich. Yes. You take a look yes. at it. Uh-huh. That's what SpongeBob looks just yeah. deformed. He it's looks like if a computer AI drew SpongeBob. <laughs> Exactly, like those dolly pictures, yep, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's what I would get, and I would feel so stupid afterwards. I was like, and then, man, like, I should have gotten like a firecracker ice pop or yeah, 
A push pop, at least. Uh, at the very least. Oh my god, those Flintstone push oh, pops. Way too good. <laughs> oh, overpowered tree. Forget as about a child. Pringles. Once you pop, you can't stop. Once you push, you know it can't stop. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, the summer heat's still getting to us, y'all. That said, <laughs> I do want to, I you know, I want to shout out some five star reviews that we've been getting. Uh, so I want to yeah. shout out first and foremost before we get into all the PlayStation news because my goodness, there's a lot. <laughs> it's going to be a show, everybody. It's going to be a Strap show. Strap in, grab a beverage, save be a a, save for a long family car ride because we're going to be here with you for a while. Yeah, yeah. So this comes from Sean, aka Skizney, over in the UK. I assume because he spelled favorite absolutely wrong. Oh, he put, he put a U in there. Okay. Ooh, we I got thoughts on that. Uh, they write, <laughs> guys, what can I say? You feel like family heart. My name is Sean, and I have been a huge fan since I found you guys over a year ago. I am a gamer, a streamer, a speedrunner, and a PlayStation fanboy since renting a PlayStation 1 from a local video store long, long ago with Tomb Raider 1 and the OG Resident oh, Evil. Hell yeah. Oh, my God, yes. Uh, most importantly... I'm an autism dad. Oh. My son, Silas, requires a lot of attention with his day-to-day -day struggles. One of his favorite activities is being pushed quietly in his bedroom hammock. Oh, my God. You got a bedroom hammock? Oh, that's as someone who recently got a hammock outside. Oh, it is. A, it's so good. That's OP. That's OP. I love it. Uh, which leaves me with you two as my therapist. <laughs> LOL. Your show is amazing, uplifting, and I always find myself laughing aloud, which on a bad day can save someone's life. Oh, thank you so much. Keep doing uh, what you do, gentlemen. Much love. Skizney. Thank oh, you. Oh, man, you can't make so me cry much. at the start of the show. <laughs> I thought that was very, very sweet. Oh, that's very sweet. Thank you, Sean. That said, I do also want to shout out, because <laughs> how do I do it? How do, how do I say this? Um... We had an accidental one star review. Isn't that uh -oh. a little embarrassing? But Jorge69, I saw how you spelled your name. Bravo to you. Uh, you know, change it to a five star and you get entered. You get entered to win that Last of Us Part One digital deluxe giveaway that we're doing and will last until the August 25th. Uh, so go ahead, rate us five stars over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, share us your review, and maybe you get shout out like Sean did on the show. Yeah. yeah. That said, before we talk about all the PlayStation goodness this week, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, like we say each and every week, if we ever got you through a long car ride, a tough day at work, whatever your situation may be, hey, it really does help us out. If you go to patreon.com slash PS Trophy Room, I want to thank our platinum members, Todd Burowitz and Toxic. I want to thank our gold members, Too Soon, Gavin Gottfried, Jose Jimenez, Jedi Master Ren, Metal Kirby, Stephen Flesh, Simon the Simon the Pie Man. Doss Simon the Pie Man, Chaotic Monkey, and Struples and Bits. I want to thank our Silver Plus members. Awesome Dave, Hide and Doys, Naga Chaka, Marcus O'Neill, JB the Purple Monkey, Jadas Vaughn Metal, who works at Ben Studios now, Tim Ulf, Justin Rodriguez, Cypher Primus, Captain Logan, Brenton Zachary, K. Grimm, Rick Arrington, Dewan A. Raksha, The Good Sir, Mr. and Mrs. Nasty Boots, Drellish, Foolish Fuji, Any Day Now, Kevin Mitchell, Kevin Diaz, The Lord Corgi, The Lord Commander Corgi, Elo2032, Jinx, the 31st, Bubble Boy N7, Jesse Garcia, Hambone, the Aztec King, Millennial Falcon Gaming, Stone Cold E.T., Astronaut Junior, not to be confused with Astronaut Senior, and of course, how can I forget this week, Green Gorilla Gamer, keeping me honest, hats off to you, good sir. Again, a dollar a day keeps the debtors at bay, and it makes us looking so good, sounding so great, so hit patreon.com slash PS Room. Every single week. I love and appreciate you all patrons. Every single week I forget about Stone Cold ET. Yeah. And every single week I crack up thinking of ET in the vest. <laughs> the Stone Cold vest. <laughs> Honest to God. Hey, listen, you know, Triple <sighs> H, he's the new leader oh, creative. Thank, thank goodness. <laughs> he can make this happen. <laughs> You know what? Next time I put in WWE 2K, this yeah. year's game, I'm going to make Stone Cold ET. <laughs> <laughs> and he will be my created wrestler. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, if we lose Stone Cold ET, like if he's like, I can't make it this month or whatever, he has to drop Patreon, I will make an in memoriam <laughs> every time we react to their name. You know? All right, Kyle, it is time. We have so much news. It's time to square it up. First bit of news that needs to be squared up is from Tom Ivan over at VGC. Tom writes, Naughty Dog releases official Last of Us remake gameplay after 
quote unquote hurtful leaks. Naughty Dog has shown off the first official Last of Us Part 1 gameplay following a series of leaks that developers have described as disheartening, frustrating, and hurtful. The 10-minute features and gameplay deep dive video below includes interviews with the directors of The Last of Us Part 1, who discuss, quote, how the team went in and rebuilt the beloved game from the ground up, end quote. PlayStation blog post confirms the game can render native 4K at targeted 30 frames per second or dynamic 4K at targeted 60 frames per second. The PS5's powerful hardware drives a host of visual benefits from denser physics with tons of bumpables and chippables. Bullets can now rip apart concrete and environmental objects and cinematics now transition seamlessly to gameplay. It reads motion matching technology means that character animations flow more convincingly, intuitively and realistically, all adding another layer of believability to characters and their interactions with the world. Further AI upgrades means that characters inhabit the world in a more authentic and realistic way, such as buddy characters navigating cover to avoid enemy NPC sightlines more authentically. Naughty Dog has also added permadeath and speedrun focus modes, plus new unlockable costumes for Joel and Ellie. The, re- the release of the official gameplay follows a number of leaks showing off the game's intro, combat, and accessibility options, among other features. Quote, Leaks really suck, said Naughty Dog Vice President Arnie Meyer after the after the release of the official video, especially when we're right on the cusp of an asset drop. It's disheartening and frustrating to teams who have put their hearts making awesome things for our fans, end quote. Yeah, it's kind of like what we talked about last week. It's like, undoubtedly, people are going to yell. Undoubtedly, yeah. people are going to, you know, shout at the developers. It's how I feel whenever a game gets leaked right before an E3 presentation. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah, granted, we're happy we see it, but like that moment, it's taken away from the developers and us. Like it, and that's the thing. So, you know, we talked about you know leaks prior, and we also had a really great conversation over at Casco Up over at Se- Season Gaming. Please check them out; they're on the rise. They're real up and comers over there. Um, but you know, we talked about what are the nature of leaks, like how how do we approach them, and it's like. You're kind of, as a creator, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because on one hand, no matter what, you know, when it comes to news of The Last of Us, it's a PlayStation thing. I feel compelled that we have to cover it. We have to talk about it. Mm -hmm. But there is something, and I think a line to be be drawn of like, what is a a good leak versus what is a a bad leak? Like, what's a leak that we can look? down upon what's a leak going okay this is Mm. this is what we're talking about here i mean a lot of this episode like you know we're talking about black panther that was leaked by jeff grubb we're going to be talking about gta 6 seemingly some good news coming out of jason schreier we're going to be talking about some you know kotor leaks which are bad but like all of those things are like announcements to games that are so far down the pipeline that we'll forget about it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or by the time they're they're revealed, and this is a shout out to to our good friend Ains at Season Gaming that said it perfectly. By the time that it's revealed, it's like the long rumored this, that, and the other thing. I mean, that was the same thing with uh, the last was part one, yeah, where Schreier leaked it in that article that it was in development, and people were in uproar over that because Days Gone Two was seemingly canceled or not given the green light, yeah. and people feel like they forgot about that pretty quickly. And I think when it comes to that, it's like, then there are the leaks that are like, here's a snippet of gameplay that's washed out or just doesn't have any context to it. It's kind of like a figure this out for yourself. I'm just going to drop it here. And I think those are the leaks that are actually harmful because if you're leaking out that like, oh, like a game like KOTOR is delayed. Well, that's good because I don't have to have my hopes up for it. Mm. right and, and and have those like when's it coming come on please like i am with blood yeah. each and every week uh-huh. and i find myself wanting uh but then you get these leaks that are just like here's gameplay here's spoilers to a game like again and i need to i need to preface this to to the audience here god of war ragnarok spoilers are online get those muted words list look up your along. north mythology your norse gods just mute them all. Everything. Uh, Put the whole everything. Norse uh, dictionary in. Di- yep. Dictionary? What the <laughs> hell, Kyle? Dictionary in yeah. the muted words. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's like, you know, those those suck. 
those are the ones that are truly hurtful. I think revealing a um, that a team is working on a game isn't the worst thing in the world. I think it's sure. it's it's these leaks that ultimately to me are going to hurt the people that just want to show this thing off because you didn't show it in its best light. You, you showed yeah. it at its worst. Uh huh. And I, I almost was about to say, I love the way that um, the Twitter user snitch was doing it. Yeah. Or was like, you know, symbols and emojis and, and you kind of have to figure it out. But then I stopped myself and I was like, but that also led to, I feel like a big part of why Sony Santa Monica got so much vitriol and hate. Yeah. Because this guy had a perfect track record. And, and we just take that as gospel. Of like, hey, God of War Ragnarok's a hint towards it something. And when it didn't pop up, when it seemed like he was hinting at, everyone directed their hate at Santa Monica. Like, how could yeah. you? We were expecting it on this day when it was just hearsay at that point. I think we're entering in a new future where companies are deciding how much they actually want to talk to us. And that's fair by them. I'm and, totally okay with that. And I think we're entering in a new era where companies have to, I think, kind of dispel rumors. Like, I like what Sucker Punch did. They're like, hey, we, yeah. we heard that, like, there are some rumors and speculations. So those things aren't true. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's a it's a arrow to the to the heart. To the knee? Oh. To the knee, sure. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, boy. Hold on. It's a classic. <laughs> uh, but, like, yeah, I'm happy they got ahead of it. And so they can just nip that in the butt and, yeah. like get over it kind of thing that said kyle we now see the whole 10 minute oh my god the last motorcycle just ran past i know you guys couldn't hear but i did it was oh i heard it oh yeah yeah yeah. i heard it yeah this person wanted to know you know they wanted you to know they Uh, knew we recorded (laughs) they're like (laughs) here's the time boys (laughs) sean capri at the xbox drive paid us 75 dollars to do this if only we could find that person and be like okay come back in like an hour and a half (laughs) and right when we do the sony pony express and you need to do a big yeehaw as you drive by (laughs) exactly that would be fantastic (laughs) uh but now we've seen the gameplay yeah now we've seen the whole thing Mm -hmm. now we can have that conversation Sure. Kyle? Joe? Is this game worth full price? Not of $70. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the $70. Full price. 100% it is. You're going to buy a full price? Yeah. You you got that steel book? Uh, yeah, someone got it for me, but <laughs> I would have I wanted to. I'm going to say something very Oh no. Courageous. Oh no. Very brave. Oh no. Watching this all uh-huh. And again, this is my opinion. You can have yours. Uh, watching what I've seen here, I was not expecting The Last of Us Part 2 gameplay. You know? Yeah. Uh, I think you put it great the last time. is You can't make the first game in a remake better than the second one that's recent. That and, like, just think about it. And as from software fans, y'all know this. Every time when we're trying to explain people why adding a jump in Elden Ring changes the game Mm -hmm. uh, or why removing a shield in Bloodborne changes the game mechanic, you know, by adding simple things or what we perceive as simple, like a prone drastically changes how that game is now going to get played. Mm -hmm. Therefore the level has to change. The AI placement has to change. And then you have to ask yourself at what point is this no longer a remake, but a entirely new game. Uh-huh. So to me, that's what I was saying. I wasn't expecting Last of Us Part Two gameplay in here. I was just expecting some better refinements, maybe some more quality of life stuff. Okay. I think the AI is a great step in that direction. That's awesome. Yeah. I would have just liked another little step. So oh, interesting. Although I don't believe now looking at it that this game is worth you know your full price of admission. I'm still going to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Sony knows it. Naughty Dog knows it. This is one of my favorite games of all time. And how many times do I say, man, uh, and I know I'm going to get flack for this, but like how much money I would pay to have my brain wiped so I could experience a game oh. like Red Dead Redemption again. Mm-hmm. They got me. They know it. Uh, yeah. And it is what it is at the end of the day. I think if you look at these things and go, it's not for me or this, this price tag is too much. Yeah. Yeah, good. good I'm not on gonna, you. Don't buy it. 
Yeah, I'm not going to tell you to how to spend your money. I'm uh, not going to be a Sony salesman for you. No, for for me though, those little changes I think are very exciting. Sure. No, no matter how many times I've gone back and played The Last of Us, there are moments where I'm in the heat of battle and I'm hiding, and Ellie is just standing in the wide open. Yeah, it breaks the immersion a little bit. So if they're if they're the buddy characters are getting to feel more like they are, are aware of their surroundings a little bit and know the situation. So that's a huge plus. If yeah. the enemies are even closer to the AI that two part two had where, yeah, they do have their kind of loops and whatnot, mm-hmm. but if you break them out of their loop and they're going to come searching for you in a way where it's going to be more intense, like two was, Fair. that is super exciting to me. And the little things like, the opening scene where you see spoiler alert, minor spoiler alert uh, that doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Um, Like you see when Joel's watch gets broken, Mm. like you see it happen like Mm. beforehand. It's not. And then after you see where it started from. Sure. And the original, that wasn't the case. You couldn't really tell that level of detail. And, and, And I think when I think of the last of us, the thing I love about it so much is, the performances and the characters. And so to see them be even closer to what Ashley Johnson and Troy Baker and, uh, Oh my God, is it a net? No, it's not a net. Whoever played Tess. I forgot the actress's okay. name. Yeah. Um, closer to their performances and see it on their faces. Like mocap has gotten better. I'm so excited to cry my ass off. Absolutely. Do this again. Yeah. Yeah. Again, this is one of my favorite games of all time. So, I'm in, but you don't necessarily have to be. And guess what? That's a okay. Mm -hmm. Also, before we uh, get into the the next story, audience, you may or may not have heard uh, windows really wants, wants me to know that uh, there's, there may be a virus on my computer. (laughs) It really wants you to know that. Oh, (laughs) So I don't know if you guys heard that in the background, but you know, (laughs) all types of interferences. I love it. That said, Kyle, it's time for our next bit of news. Next bit of news broke today, uh, right? It was today a thing? No, this is yeah. a yesterday thing. Oh, this is a yeah. Wow, mm-hmm. man. Time flies when you're I having know. fun. It's an enigma. Uh, Steve, Steve Watts over at GameSpot writes, Black Panther open world single player game reportedly in development. Reporter Jeff Grubb says this will likely be the debut project of a new studio founded by the former head of Monolith, which made Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War. Marvel fans saw what's next for Black Panther with a stellar Wakanda Forever trailer from Comic-Con this weekend, but that's not all that's in the works. A Black Panther game is also said to be in development and may be coming from a new studio founded by the former head of Monolith Productions. Reporter Jeff Grubb talked about the new game on his daily news show for GameSpot sister site Giant Bomb. According to Grubb, it will be an open world single player game and something of an origin story. It takes place after the previous Black Panther has died, so players must take on the challenge of becoming the new Black Panther. It's very early in development, so no release window was given. The new game has been codenamed Project Rainier and is coming from EA. Grubb said this is likely the debut project from a Seattle studio founded by former Monolith Productions VP and studio head Kevin Stevens. Under Stevens, Monolith made the licensed Lord of the Rings games, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, and its sequel, Shadow of War. Ooh-wee. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. My goodness gracious, I do declare. First of all, I just have to say, you, you get you, you come off the pedigree of Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War, you have piqued my interest because both of oh, those games yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. are fan-freaking-tastic. But... I didn't play Shadow of War. Was it good? Dude, Shadow of War was absolutely fantastic. I know the like the microtransaction stuff was a little crazy with that one. Was it not? Yes. Shadow Shadow of War was. Uh, yeah, Mordor like, was not. Yeah, full of awful microtransactions. Yeah. That said, Kyle, how are you? Like, when you hear this news, are you excited? Does this pique your interest? What do you want to see from this game? Because taking over the role of Chitala, and I'm sorry, I'm always going to butcher his name. I'm awful at pronunciation. Mm-hmm. I could barely pronounce Kyle Stevens' fun. Uh, <laughs> hey! That's, yeah, parties after a few white claws. <laughs> exactly. You're the funky mode, Kyle. Uh, so so where are you at with this game? I'm excited. Yeah? Um, 
The EA part uh, it's, is what it is. They also are responsible for Fallen Order. Okay. Um, so I'm okay with that. Um, I'm excited because the the people that worked at Monolith who made the Shadow of, of War and, and Shadow of Mordor, those games were really cool open worlds. They felt so Tolkien and Lord of the Rings esque, and that mm. world was really great realized. To imagine being in an open world in Wakanda, that sounds super exciting. I don't know how I feel about them killing the Black Panther and you taking over the mantle. Yeah. That's a little too close for it's me. It's a not, little too close to home. I'm, I think someone I'm, might be doing that right now. <laughs> I'm not over Chadwick passing still. Yeah. Like, it still hurts to think about. That, so I don't want to... I, I, here's the thing where, uh, like, where I get stuck. Are on. we also going to be like a voiceless and faceless kind of character? That, but like, is there a character creator? Like, I don't. Yeah, uh, I don't know how I feel that about leaves that. Leaves the door aspect. open for some awful things that could happen. I feel like. Well, I, <laughs> yeah, I know where your mind's going. Yeah, <laughs> my mm-hmm. right there. But like, to me, it's it's like I don't want that. I no. You know, I I want. I, I want a, like if it's not Chitala, then it has to be Shuri. You know what I mean? Like, get, it has give, to be a fully voiced character with like, yeah, don't give me like and stuff. Not a generic Steve. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> my name. Yes, um, don't give me that. Give me something that feels like like from a comic book. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. and I feel like giving uh, something generic would would bum me out a bit. So that's that's where I'm at. I'm like, all this yeah. sounds great. I think the pedigree of this studio mm-hmm. and of these developers, that's fantastic. The thing that does worry me, Kyle, it is EA. Yeah. Is this thing really going to come out, Kyle? <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. And it's, it's uh, also weird to just know that they are making an open world single player game after they tweeted out that awful thing about like <laughs> the bad 10, but they play single player games. Yeah. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> yeah. You're it- obviously putting money into this. Like that was, that was whoever was in charge of their social media platform on that day should not be employed anymore. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so a second thought would have been great. Yeah. Uh, before hitting said that being said, that's where it kind of concerns me because though I feel like, EA has made steps in the past to improve and like, you know, Jedi Fallen Order is one of my favorite, if not my favorite Star Wars game mm-hmm. ever. Well, they also made Battlefield 2042. Sure. Right? And that's the thing that concerns me of how they've even like tried to handle the Star Wars IP. Sure. Has it been great? Um, I will uh, counterpoint. Yeah. Dead space. Okay. Here's counter counterpoint they had such a great team they, they did this role. they and did you're, you're just, right you're totally right <laughs> they can't enabled my my boy they massacred mm-hmm. my boy but so hey, counter counter counterpoint we now have Callisto protocol i mean that looks fantastic <laughs> okay all right but think of how many awesome dead space games we could yeah. add in the between yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. but like that's the thing is like how much is ea going to try to ea things there's also and i want to know if i'm kind of out of out of place here, Kyle. I'm also getting worried how much, and I know this sounds like a weird complaint, how much IP from other things like Star Wars, Marvel, mm. you name it, are getting into games. Mm. Like there's a lot of licensed products now. And I think what makes games so awesome is that they have this just, you know, so many great, original unique- ideas original ideas yeah. like a dead space like a red dead yeah. redemption like a last of us and so like though i'm excited for the black panther there is like the skeptic in me going yeah but uh what if it's just more you know like what like what if you get a captain america what you get this that and like yeah sure those games that. will be great hopefully who knows but like it's the it's the same issue like okay, movies nervous. are running into the last few years where yes. it seems every week it's just another entry of a latest blockbuster or it's a remake of something that we already know and the smaller original things nobody goes and sees when which they should because those are awesome. 
Yeah. And so that's, that's the, again, the little skeptic that is just hates, hates everything, you know? Sure. Yeah. That said, Greg writes in, hello, gentlemen, uh, with the excitement, the exciting announcement of an open world Black Panther game, I started thinking about what superheroes need in his or her open world uh, game next. If done correctly, Punisher would be an absolute slanger. Sign me up for all that tasty Peggy 18 action <laughs> and inaudible grunting slash yelling. But probably, oh, Kyle, this is yours. The tastiest num num of them all. God, it's just yeah. well, the worst. It's worse than the word moist. It's nah. awful. Would be an open world The Boys game. I'd lose hundreds of hours just flying around as Homelander, laser eyeing everything and everyone in my path. Oh my God. Spoiler alert. I'm pretty sure in The Boys game, Homelander is the villain. <laughs> I, think, I think he's the baddie. I think we're talking about Injustice. It'd be day one purchase for me. I'd mark out $299 for the collector's edition featuring a steel book with no game. How dare you? God bless. And a statue of Homelander. Again, Greg, I'm concerned about your fascination with Homelander. <laughs> <laughs> Recreated at Washington, crossing the Delaware, while the rest <laughs> of the seven paddle the boat. That is fantastic. That's a good image. Yeah. That is so good. What superhero would you like to see take control in an open world setting? Thanks for a... Great show uh, last week or weekend, week out. And hopefully you beep me unlike Kyle did last week. That's <laughs> great. That's great. Um, cheers. The, cheers. Greg, a.k.a. the GMAC 99. That's right. So, Kyle, what would uh -huh. your dream superhero game be? And why is it Daredevil? You know, that would be great. I have another answer. Oh, I, I think a Daredevil thing would be awesome. I really do. Okay. Greg coming up with the boys game, also really cool. That would be a good use of create my own character of like, give me some, inject me with some V and whatever <laughs> happens, happens kind of thing. Oh, like it could be like a roguelite. Or yeah, roguelite, yeah. Right? Where like you inject mm -hmm. yourself with V and yep. like you get a new superpower. Yep. That makes mm, I like that, that would be really cool. However, my answer is invincible. Give oh. me an invincible game. Uh, because I feel like that would be super, super cool. I yeah. love all those characters in it. It would be funny, it would be brutal, it would have that moments where you have some levity to it and some actual like heart to heart moments with the, the other characters, but then you have um oh my god, why can't I think of his name? The Jason Mansukas character. Oh God, I, it's been I've a while. not watched in, in, Invincible. Yo, you have it? No. Nope. Oh, mm -hmm. Joe, it's so good. I've watched a few episodes. I was, I was like, this is really great. I'll watch okay. it and never do. Okay. Uh, yeah, but like, you'll have the moments with like the Jason Manzuka's character. Who I can't think of right now. I'll look it up mm -hmm. in a second. Just like saying something ridiculous and funny, and yeah, I feel like Invincible would work very, very well. I just want. I don't know why, but like Daredevil, just that would be so awesome for them to do. Um, I think Daredevil just has such a, I mean, you could say it, it's, it, it could be like an Arkham style ask beat him, beat him up. But like, I just think of like the mod and Sifu with like putting Daredevil instead of Sifu in there. And I'm just like, yeah, that God, that just uh, seems so awesome. Really quickly. Uh, Jason Manzoukas's character and how can I forget this? Uh, its name is Rex Splode. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Yeah. So yeah, that's, my that's my only like thing with Daredevil, go for it, being a game, please, is would it not be too similar to Spider Man? Another character in New York City area. <sighs> that's fair. Open world kind of thing. Yeah, I, I would feel like it would lose a little bit of its luster, especially but, if like Insomniac did it. Oh, I mean, well, I don't know what studio I would put in here, but like, as long as you, as long as you're going through the universe in a different way. It yeah. can still lend itself to be a really awesome, awesome game. And, and are we going like super daredevil with it? And you have to like pulse out so you can see your surroundings. I mean, that'd be pretty cool. I don't know. Just just play with it. You know what I'd like to see more? Yeah. Like indie developers get some stuff. Yeah, that'd you be know? cool. Like Mike Bithell got like John Wick. Like that would be awesome. Yeah. You know, so that we like there are actual creators out there that are thinking outside the box, other than mm -hmm. you know Ooh. what we can do. How? 
Do you think an Ant-Man game would work? Hmm. Like, I, Big oh, small. that'd be interesting. That would be like a platformer, I would think, right? What if it's an open world game as Ant-Man, but you are stuck as tiny Ant-Man? And you're in a house. <laughs> And the house is the open world. <laughs> all right, fair enough. That's great. You know what? I'm okay with that. I'm all right. all right with that. You know what I'm not all right with, Kyle? Oh, oh boy. The cancellation of a remake that I was actually very on board with. Uh, it's very shocking. Uh, Rebecca Smith at PS Lifestyle writes, Star Wars KOTOR remake delayed indefinitely after Aspire fires two directors. The Star Wars... The Star Wars. The, you think I hear about those Star War? Uh, <laughs> the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake is reported to be in serious trouble after Aspire Media fired two of the project's directors. Apparently, the Star Wars KOTOR remake is now indefinitely delayed, and the developer is looking for new contacts and development opportunities. Star Wars KOTOR remake was in development at Aspire Media for almost three years before it was indefinitely delayed. According to Bloomberg, Aspire showed off a vertical slice demo of the game to Lucasfilm and Sony, who were pleased with the game's progress and believed the project was hitting its targets. A week later, Aspire fired design director Brad Prince and art director Jason Miner, a decision that seems to be unexpected. Sources then claim the Aspire studio heads themselves were not happy with the game's progress and that it was taking up too much time and money. The fate of the game is now in doubt. Aspire employees claim they've been told the company is now looking for new contracts and development opportunities, and Star Wars KOTOR Remake has been put on hold indefinitely. Saber Interactive has been brought in to help out on the game, and some Aspire employees are hoping Saber takes over the development of the project completely. Either way, the game will definitely not be hitting its original release window for the end of 2022. If development continues, 2025 would be more accurate release window now. Both Aspire Media and parent company Embracer have refused to comment. Yeah, yeah, this one hurts. Again, I think that this is... This is is a bummer. This is a leak that I appreciate because I'm never... I'm not going to be looking for this game at the next showcase, Uh right? So I could kind of cross that off my list. As much as the news sucks, I'm glad that, you know, the Band-Aid's ripped now. Sure. Um, That being said, though, that being said, I, I like what... You know, there was a question uh, in the Discord by Drellish, and I'm, I lost it here in the notes. But what is the fault here? Who Who is it on? You know, is it on, you know, on Sony? Maybe was was their visions too, or their vision too ambitious for Aspire? Mm. Is it the management? Is it the team themselves? What? What do you think happened here? Because this this was a game that, again, like Aspire started hiring for folks last year for this. It gets announced at the future game showcase PlayStation thing. Um, and then now two directors gone. I mean, first of all, shocked that that was already in, in the works for three years. Yeah. Uh, so they've been working on it for a little bit. I don't know who the fault. That's an interesting question because... It says Lucasfilm and Sony were pleased with where the game was. Right. Was so, it? <laughs> I, I, that also brings me to the question of, do you think Sony steps in and be like, hey, why are you putting this on hold? I, I think that's a, a, a joint conversation they're all having. Right? Yeah. Because right? like, at, I feel like this is a huge blow to Sony. Sony is just like a, a, a like an ace up their sleeve kind of thing that's no longer there. Yeah, I mean, when you take a look at like it was that a console exclusive for PlayStation Five, right? Like, that's or time exclusive, thing. but like time exclusive, sure. That was like something that was a renowned Xbox exclusive thing. Now this is a PlayStation. It's like yeah. how the turntables, <laughs> yeah. and now it's 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 not here. It's wild. So that's I so I do wild. think it's it's on Aspire. Um, I, I I do think it's on Embracer here because there had to be a poor line of communication if you know the management is looking at this and though their partners are pleased with it them themselves aren't like there had to be something that they saw that had them so sheepish that they just pulled the rug uh, and maybe that is hey we're throwing too much money at this thing but at the same exact time it's a star war sure and you know you had like folks from bioware that worked on the original game working on this so it does bum me out and i do wonder and these are like the things i I always wonder about it's like what are the next steps now 
right? Like, is that a bridge burned by Aspire and Sony, do you think? Is this mm. just like, eh, things didn't pan out. Where does Sony have to go now, you know, in order to search for that RPG now that it's gone? It, that's oh, yeah. the thing that I'm left wondering, because to me, it's like, no matter whose fault it is, it's not here anymore. Yeah. So, like, I could speculate all day who it is. Maybe it's, you know, John from accounting crunched the numbers wrong. <laughs> uh, but, like, you fire two directors, something ain't right with the management. Yeah. And and, and I think uh, rereading it and thinking about it while you were talking, they did show a vertical slice to Luca, yeah. Lucasfilm and Sony. So they, they could have probably put a ton of work into that slice and everything around it was just not coming together not coming together the way they want it to um which could be the case uh, so i'm sorry what was your question no so actually let's go right to nagachaka actually who writes in joe kyle you are now in charge of playstation <gasps> a new or a returning segment now if i was shu as Ooh. we all know the shoe is now on the other foot shu who <laughs> hey yoshida has a role at playstation we never really know what it is it's like oh i run the head of indies hey, but like he's Greg doing Rice a new does. indie show did you see that no i did not yeah playstation's doing a, like an indie show uh on youtube they're doing something and there it's like 30 minutes of him playing stray with the devs oh, oh like, like right, the playstation okay. underground stuff kind of sorry yeah but hey place you're doing something there right. you go you're putting sh- you got shoe behind the sticks yeah. but now we're shuhei yoshida because we're okay know we're shoe. that mm-hmm. secretly shuhei runs the whole show over at sony oh 100 okay. percent. yeah sie that's his business jim ryan <laughs> maybe that's why he unfollowed us he was like i don't like these people being me <laughs> <laughs> absolutely uh what would you two do with the knights of the old republic remake cancel the project Give Aspire uh, Media as much time as needed despite the massive delay or give it to another studio like Bluepoint. Great question. Nagachaka, uh, you read my goddamn mind. You, so you're thinking Bluepoint? Oh, my God. You have I mean, them right yeah. there. Sure. The king of the remake. Sure. The Demon Souls. Uh-huh. All the, the Metal Gear Solid Collection, Kyle. Yeah. Have them right there. Hell yes. Absolutely. They made the Metal Gear collection? Mm-hmm. The, on PS3, yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, Shadow um, of the Colossi. Yep, the, the Ever heard Nathan of it? Drake collection. Was exactly. Also exactly. Um, Titanfall yeah. on 360. Ooh. That was, uh, yeah, that's a great idea. Just give it a blue point. But I, I feel like Sony... I, I'm sorry. I am not acting like you. I feel like we... <laughs> Cannot have another Last Guardian on our hands. Fair. I I don't want to have us fielding questions for the next seven, eight years of what happened to this game. So either we put up the money and be like, hey, Aspire, it's not indefinitely delayed. Like, get to work. We're going to give you a little bit more money, whatever. Let's this uh, these wheels still move. You know what I mean? Let's mm-hmm. grease the wheels a little bit because I feel like this is a big loss yeah. for, for us here at Sony. I do. I, th- I think this is a huge bummer as a Star Wars fan, because like how many times do we see something promising Star Wars 313 and we just get it ripped from here, under us? Here's man. this Amy heading Star Wars game. Oh, ripped Boop, from under us. And it's gone. <laughs> Boop. God, it sucks. And now this. So, yeah, a part of me, just as a Star Wars fan, just goes, throw as much money as you need to. But yeah. at the same exact time, this is a timed exclusive, right? And for how long? Who knows? But, like, this is only a timed exclusive. If I'm Sony, I'd be like, all right, well, this sack of money is going to somewhere else. Cough, or cough, Square Enix. put more money on the table and forget time exclusive. It is an exclusive. <sighs> Anything to get that project moving. Well, here's the thing. I mean, again, you you just fired two directors, uh-huh. um, so obviously there is a this is a bad match. So like, sure, do you cut and run from Aspire and turn somewhere else? Like going, you know what? How about we take this or we find a team like they did with Insomniac with Spider Man when Insomniac was independent? Like you could go over and you know to a I, I don't know just for the sake of like a remedy and go hey. I like what you did with control with the force stuff. Come over here. We we got a Star War. You want to see this? You want, have you seen this? Have you heard about this? The Star War? It's got energy swords. I mean, lightsabers. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, that's 
that's what I would probably do if 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 given the opportunity. Is, but the y- is Yoda thing is a just... janitor in the Remedy Star Wars game? <laughs> <laughs> that makes so much sense. Hey, please play Control. You'll get that reference. If you play Control. <laughs> Look at Yanni the Yanitor and don't say that's yeah. Yoda, because he yeah. definitely is. Ati oh and Yoda, God. they're the same. <laughs> that is so goddamn good. So yeah, that's the I would I would I would cut and run at this point. Burn the bridge and just Unfortunately Bummer. You know, if I'm not giving it to Blue Point because I'm working on Blue Point 2, God damn it, just give it to me. I don't care. That <laughs> then it has to be what it else, has to be you just leave. What else does Embracer have going on? You know, like what what I don't know, they buy everything all at once all the time. It's like that movie. They do, don't they? But famous <laughs> Seamus right I was gonna show as my holding on to something oh, because I got that today. Look at it that. ruined it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's fine. It's fine. Uh famous Seamus right said the most famous Seamus I've ever met in my whole entire life. You can put that on the in the bank. Uh now that Kotor delay indefinitely hurts, I just want to relive the pain. And ask you what is your favorite star or relieve the pain. What is your favorite Star Wars games? I uh, now, Kyle, I know you're not a Star Wars fan. Sure, um, but I do have an answer. Okay. Yeah. I love the Bounty Hunter game on PS2. God damn. Yeah. The one with Django. <sighs> <laughs> What's the matter? I I didn't say Masters of Terracassi or whatever it is. Or... <laughs> no, you didn't say you didn't say Dark Forces. You didn't say Shadows of the Empire. No, you no, didn't no, no. say Rogue Squadron or Rogue Squadron mm-hmm, Two mm-hmm. or just all the Rogue Squadrons. Bounty Hunter. <laughs> you, you could even said Pod Racing. You know. I mean, it's a pretty good game. It actually is. I hate <laughs> I hate to agree with you there. It actually is a pretty damn fun game. That said, Kyle. Enough, enough of this talk. It's making me depressed. Okay. I'm and sorry. What's d- yours favorite? You didn't answer. Oh, uh, d- I mean, Shadows of the Empire for um, for the N64 is just the OG great. Dark Forces is the best Doom clone there ever is and ever will be. That's a fact, Jack. Take it to the bank. The GameCube era definitely was Rogue Squadron. Was it two? I forget. Um, in the 360 PS3 era, it's definitely... Um, actually, no, uh, 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 what's it? Republic Commando is GameCube. Mm-hmm. That one's the best with Rogue Squadron as well. Uh, 360 and PS3. I mean, absolutely. It is. Oh my God. Now, now it left me. Uh, the f- force unleashed, the force unleashed. Yeah, there you go. Not two, just force yeah. unleashed. Uh-huh. Uh, and then you have the, the goat, which is Jedi fallen order. Yeah. Fallen order is my real answer. Yeah. But yeah. That said, Kyle, let's talk about another game that we won't play until a decade from now. <laughs> Take really? a look at it. I, no, I think it's closer than we think. Oh, yeah. Joe Scrubbles at IGN writes, GTA 6 will reportedly feature a first female playable character and add new cities over time. Grand Theft Auto 6 will reportedly feature a female playable, well, playable character in its campaign for the first time. Rockstar apparently plans to launch the game with a single city, but add more locations over time through updates. As part of a report on Rockstar by Bloomberg, sources close to the studio discussed the new female character, who will be Latina. The character will reportedly be part of a pair of bank robbers in a story influenced by real-life criminals Bonnie and Clyde. Female protagonists have previously only been available as custom characters in GTA Online, never in the game's single-player campaigns. Rockstar co-founder Dan Hauser, who has since left the company, previously indicated the company was thinking about a female lead as far back as 2013. Update, the first Grand Theft Auto game featured female playable characters. This would mark the first in the 3D GTA series as we know it today. The report also indicates that the launch version of GTA 6 will begin with fictionalized Miami and surrounding areas, presumably a return for Vice City, but will be updated with new missions and cities on a regular basis. That launch version apparently already includes more interior locations than any GTA game previously okay i know like the headlines like the first female character and that's great and all yeah the thing is the scope of this game sounds insane and i like usually that would scare me off but if there is one company and one developer that i don't have much faith in in terms of like the scope of a thing and making the surrounding look 
immaculate is mm-hmm. Rockstar. Um, holy crap! Like v- Vice City, yes. yes. Let's return there. Yeah. I want to see that modernized. But then going right, re- adding new missions and cities on a quote unquote regular basis. This is the GTA to end all GTAs. I, I don't think there think will so. be a seven. I think. I don't even think this is going to be called six. I think it's just going to be called Grand Theft Auto, and it is a platform. Yeah, uh, and I mean, look, that that, that could depress some, and I, sure. I, I get it because like more and more games are becoming platforms at mm-hmm. this point. But you know, I love what our good friend Miles Dampierre said on uh, Chatterdays uh, on his podcast. It's like, how many Call of Duties do we really need? Like annual every year? Why can't it just be you know? Here's this product it's going to evolve over time you know how many other like assassin's creed do we need every year every other year why can't it be like why are we so fearful of this thing that is just kind of lives on and updates over time i i kind of like that idea here with gta i think you're right like as long as you add story storylines in these Uh with every city that you introduce or whatever have you um this is a great idea and the scope again is just incredible. So what do you think uh, of all that you've seen here? Is this going to be the thing that gets you back into GTA? Yes. I refuse to rebuy GTA five. That's the only reason why I haven't replayed it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I obviously, I think <laughs> as the sales chart shows, everybody and their grandmother are going to be buying Grand Theft Auto six or whatever it is when it yeah. comes out. Ooh, um, yeah, sorry, I had a cough. Um, yeah, I'm excited about this. I the scope is uh, huge, ambitious, and scary. I yeah. think scary more than anything because as somebody that got overwhelmed when I played The Witcher Three, just mm. for a little bit of all the icons on the map and me wanting to see every bit of the map, I'm a little scared that it's going to include multiple cities Mm -hmm. and in doing that is it going to be the gta 5 thing where you can just switch characters and you are now in another city as a different character oh that actually like the the trevor um like bouncing between the three protagonists in in los santos yeah this time you're like you're playing as bounce between cities yeah whoever this new character is and then uh Uh you know you go all the way back to liberty city Right, sure, and your yeah. Nico or whatever, like yeah. that is a really cool idea and premise. And you're you're playing like those two heists or whatever have you at the same exact time. Mm-hmm. Like that's a real cool concept. And oh my god, could you imagine? Oh wow, hmm. could you imagine a a heist like the end mission for this game, where each character in the city is hitting the same company at the same time. To take down this evil person from the top, like just think of it and like you have this. to coordinate it. Like, at, oh man, that sounds really like cool. Like they're on a Discord call. Like yep. Nico is like, like let's just say, like the, their equivalent of Goldman Sachs, right? Like he's yep. in, mm-hmm. and he's like disabling the mainframe or whatever. And then in the meantime, you know, you're whoever this this new chick is, and she's like robbing the bank, and you're like yep. you're disabling all the types of stuff. You're working yep. in tandem with mm-hmm. each other. Like that sounds really cool. It does sound cool. And just the. The the one thing that I'm curious about is like how do they transition from GTA five to GTA six? Like how do you tell folks from G- that are playing GTA online? Oh yeah, that th- you should jump the most one of the most successful online entities out there. How do you how do you? Or, I would or say it is there? the most. I think like that Fortnite and like League of Legends, right? Sure, I, I think just because of how long it's been around, it's sure. probably got some legs on everybody else. Oh, sure, absolutely. But like, you know, how do you tell them, hey, let's transition you to Grand Theft Auto Six? What if Kyle? This is what I'm thinking. They they are not transitioning from, uh, you know, GTA Five to Six. They're just evolving the platform. They're just like, here's mm-hmm. what it like, whatever GTA Six is. This is now just part of online, like whatever new online elements they 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 throw in there, because yeah. I you don't want to gate off. What is it? Over a hundred plus million users on GTA. Oh, yeah, you don't want to alienate those people by I'm going, talking about eh, people who spend a lot of real world money. Yeah, 
in an online game with shark cards. I would be very upset if I use a lot of money to buy a car in GTA and, and then the new one comes over. out and I can't bring it over. That would be a big bummer. It would, it would, yeah, it would hurt my soul. So that's the thing that I'm most curious about. Again, I love the representation. I love that it's, uh, you know, a Latina character, but that's all I know from this character. I want to mm-hmm. actually know their ambitions, their arc, all that stuff before I get excited. I think it's cool that you added that. Or, I love or, the Bonnie and Clyde that. thing. That's the Bonnie and Clyde thing cool. is, is dope, but I need to see, see more uh, to, to get not to say I'm bored with the idea. No, but, but like I am excited. I am excited we are I, I think when I think of the last couple of GTAs, mm-hmm. I'm a little bummed by the setting. Just because huh. like I love when I think of Grand Theft Auto, the first thing that pops in my head is Vice City. Mm, okay. So going back to the neon infused Miami esque yeah. area. You know, the, the the bright blues and pinks yeah. and neon colors. Like, I'm excited to see that in today's visuals. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, you know, go to all the different clubs and nightclubs and, and you know, do coke and in I- the back. <laughs> as uh, the character, not as in the real character. life. That's right. Bumming whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, and Don't honestly. Don't yell, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, there's just... Florida is a meme, so 100%. just meme the crap out of this thing. Yes. If yeah. anybody can do it, it is Rockstar. So. Put bath salts in the game and see what happens. <laughs> you know they're going to. God. <laughs> I- I'm actually, you're right. I think this game is is prog- progressing faster than we, we think. I think we're going to see it sooner rather than later. I, s- I think we see it at next year's E3 or around E3 time. Fair. I think I think we're playing this game 2025, 2026. Yeah. That's, yeah. And that's soon in my book for a game yeah. that this mm-hmm. that, this scope. That said, Kyle, it is time for the next bit of news. It's almost flash news. Almost. Take it away. <laughs> like we said, a lot went down between last week's episode and this week. So much. Week. So much. Jamie Feltman over at Upload VR writes PSVR 2 reveals pass through view and virtual boundary system. PSVR 2 will use its four onboard cameras to allow players to see into the real world and set up safe boundary zones, Sony has confirmed. A post on the PlayStation blog revealed new details for the upcoming headset, which runs off the PS5 console. For starters, PSVR 2 features a black and white black and white pass-through option, similar to those on the Meta Quest 2, I'm sorry, the Oculus Quest 2, or Pico, Pico Neo Link 3. By ex- accessing a menu, you can quickly select a View Surroundings button to see the world around you. You can also use Set Play Area to start setting up your VR space. Again, this works much like it does on other headsets. Use the motion controllers to point around the play space and establish virtual boundaries, but PSVR 2 can also scan the area itself to give an initial layout, detecting objects like couches. Oh, that's it. Just couches. The headset (laughs) will then warn you when you approach those boundaries. Other upcoming headsets like Oculus's Project Cambria are set to introduce color pass through to give you a more accurate representation of the world, but it doesn't appear that PSVR 2 will have a color option. Elsewhere, the system can record players' own reactions for streams if they're using the PS5 HD camera. It doesn't look like the original PS4 camera for PSVR 1 can be used. The cinematic mode will also return, allowing players to access any flat screen video content and games inside PSVR 2 played on a virtual screen. Screen. This mode uses 1920 by 1080 HDR video format with 24 slash 60 hertz and also a 120 hertz of frame rate. Who we? So a lot of this, this is like for people that aren't as in tuned as humble brag we are. Um, a lot of the features of this headset, it seems like they they took a look at what you know Facebook was doing. I'm not going to say that, <laughs> though I just did. Um, they, they're taking a look at what Mark Zuckerberg's doing and go, how can we do that but not charge people a hundred bucks extra midway mm-hmm. through the generation? <laughs> Looking at oh you. Oh my God. Oh, I know. awful. I know. Oh, don't get me if, started. If y'all don't know, <laughs> Facebook just raised the price of the Oculus uh, by a hundred bucks yeah. on a random Monday and thought that was a good idea. Like almost directly after this news came out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, very crazy. Very stupid. But. 
like the streaming feature is awesome. Like it being able to record yeah. you while you're playing that thing. And you're actually, from what I understand, seeing yourself doing all the motions as well. Mm-hmm. That's actually going to help me <laughs> quite a bit so that I know what type of like to get my, my accurate movement uh, yeah. or to make my, my movement a little bit more accurate for me. And but just like, for anyone that w- wanted to like stream playing VR, exactly. I'm sure it's way easier to do it this way than like to figure out how it works with the, Oc- the not the Oculus, the, uh, the Elgato capture cards and everything yes. like, and I think that is a great entry point for people yeah. to then stream these games and hopefully build that community even more. So yeah. I think the broadcast option is actually the hidden feature here because like the see-through option is something or pass through, whatever is something we all kind of expected though. The camera, yeah. when you're seeing though, it's like black and white, like I'm a dog. Um, you're the, the, the picture is much more crisp than much crisper. The, the, the Oculus the quest. Yeah. Uh, so the cameras are impressive. Yeah. The other thing that is wowing me, Kyle, uh-huh, is the the you could you could choose the video format to be 128 frames per second like in the cinematic mode uh-huh that has me really excited for some reason i don't know why because my tv can do it but like i, I used it, to it gives people an entry to do that yeah i used to take advantage of that on uh the quest where they had specific like I think Amazon had its own app on Quest, mm-hmm. uh, Prime specifically, so yeah. you can go onto your Prime and it's like you're in a movie theater, big screen movie theater, and watch Prime stuff in a virtual theater. Yeah, and it was very, very cool. It, it's it's a cool concept and a cool idea, but yes. like they did something the same for Hulu, and it's like you're in a, a virtual living room. Like this is not my living room. This looks like a Family <laughs> Guy set. Oh, <laughs> you're yeah, not yeah. fooling me. Yeah. No, that uh, was like legit a theater. Yeah, and so like to me, I'm like, okay, theater. All right, maybe, but yeah. like for me, it's just like just show me the thing, like just yeah. show me the movie, mm-hmm. like just mm-hmm. show me the screen. That this has me super excited though, because undoubtedly, Quest is the the bar for VR gaming, yeah. and to see that PlayStation and Sony are taking notes and bringing it to their thing the quality of psvr2 has gone up dramat dramatically for just this news yeah not nothing really gameplay wise just like quality of life things like if you think back if you owned a psvr1 and you had that giant cord that you are always uh feeling when you're moving around playing like beat saber or what have you and not knowing how close you are to a wall (laughs) <laughs> or no boundaries to tell you like oh you're yeah. way off course or whatnot. Yeah. This is going to be so much better and and not having to worry about moving your couch. Yes. Right? Like you can that was a huge issue too. You had to move your couch out of the way cuz just in case you tripped over it, but now you can set the boundary yep. and everything. Oh man, it's great. I'm so excited. The mo- modernized features yeah coming. And that's that's good to see. Also, the 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 UI as well kind of does. It looks like they're like, eh, what did Meta do? Okay, yeah, all right, and that too, because the the OS does very much look like a marriage of the PlayStation meets mm. the Oculus. Uh, so it it looks great. And, and Stingray X writes, and how dare you use this verbiage? Um, how banging excited are you both about this PSVR two news recently? Take care. Oh, I'm banging real hard. <laughs> I could say who's banned from <laughs> asking questions. Stingray <laughs> X is. No, I'm only kidding. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. And, th- you know, they even like, they kind of like, you know, wink and a nod. The n- I think the next time we see PSVR, we're getting that price. We're, yeah. We're- price end date or just yeah. price? Price and date. Price and date. Sweet. Okay. My Tainted Brain writes in. I see on Reddit. There is a subreddit devoted to people who end up hurting themselves when using VR as they forget where they actually are. And it's called R slash VR to ER. Oh, that's amazing. (laughs) So have you guys hurt yourself using VR? I've not only used VR. Sorry, I have not used VR yet. But I have a horrible feeling that videos of me may end up on that subreddit as I usually get totally absorbed in games that i play um i feel like you're gonna have less of a problem here but like i would i wouldn't hurt myself my hand would like accidentally like hit the desk 
You know? oh, I'm God. sorry. I went on the Reddit. Oh my God, this is amazing. This woman is in VR mm-hmm. and they show a clip of the screen and it looks like there's like an opening, right? Where you yeah. can jump and maybe skydive. And she takes a couple steps back and then sprints forward and jumps right into the wall. <laughs> like full on into the wall. That's amazing. Thank you so much, uh, Tainted Brain, for yeah. giving me this gift that is this subreddit. I will. This is an after show this. thing. 100%. Patreon.com yes, slash PSR. I have God 100% damn. hurt myself in VR. Yeah. Um, Upstairs in my room, I was playing Beat Saber one morning on my quest, and I have an old metal bed frame. Oh, and at the corners, a big like metal chunk come juts out a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I was, I didn't know where I was, and I was doing the Beat Saber <laughs> thing, and I like twirled or something, yeah. and I just whacked my shin straight into oh. it. Oh, gushing blood. <laughs> oh my god, really? Was, that much it of a was, wound. It was bad. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think that that subreddit will be hurt by this news because uh, yeah. literally <laughs> because this is going to alleviate that. Now, when I use the Oculus, it'll actually show me. I'm like, you're in the red zone, bud. You should take a step back. So this here is is an extension of that and then some. So I, I feel like you're not going to have that problem with the next iteration of PSVR 2. Mm-hmm. That's it, Kyle. All right. This is the last story in Speculation Town. Take it away. Oh, um, I guess I got to get off the subreddit. <laughs> you got to get Hold off on. the subreddit, but we got a podcast. <laughs> I was watching an older gentleman uh, fall over in PSVR. Um, <laughs> Sammy Barker at Push Square writes, X Square Enix dev heard rumors of Sony buyout. So you know all those rumors from a while back about Sony snatching up Square Enix? Yeah. Well, a new interview with Games Industry has added some fuel to the fire all these months later. ex idos Montreal developer Stephanie Diastus says that he had, had heard rumors of the aforementioned acquisition. According to to Diastus, Square Enix's Tokyo HQ didn't seem to be hugely invested in the publisher's Western studios, the same studios that it mostly sold off to Embracer Group earlier this year. There's Embracer. How dare you? Quote, How dare you? I was losing hope that Square Enix Japan would bring great things to Eidos. I was losing confidence in my headquarters in London, Diastus recalls. In their annual fiscal reports, Japan always added one or two phrases saying, We were disappointed with certain games. They didn't reach expectations. And they did that strictly for certain games that were done outside of Japan, end quote. Mm. This was quite some time ago, by the way. As Games Industry points out, Deasus left Eidos Montreal in 2013, and he believes that it's been a slow and steady decline for the Western teams ever since. Quote, if I read between the lines, Square Enix Japan was not as committed as we had, as we hoped initially. Deasus admits, he continues, and there are rumors, obviously, that with all these activities of mergers and acquisitions, that Sony would really like to have Square Enix within their wheelhouse. I heard rumors that Sony said they're really interested in Square Enix Tokyo, but not the rest. Interesting. This, of course, ties back into the Embracer Group deal, which had some internet analysts suggesting Square Enix was deliberately deliberately streamlining its operations so that it would be a more attractive purchase. However, it's worth pointing out that Deastus doesn't clarify where he heard these rumors. It's entirely possible that they're the same rumors that we've been writing news stories about, in which case he may only know as much as the rest of us. Yeah, there's also been no clarification on Ashnus's behalf. I wanted nope. to try to nail that last name, and guess what? I did not. Um, hey, hey, Joe, you want to say it with me? Yeah. I'm three. Okay. One, One two, two, three. three. All, All roads, roads lead, lead to, to Square, Square Enix. Enix. Nailed we it. got there. We got there. <laughs> I thought we were going to try to say DS. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, I, I said know. it way too many times. I'm pretty sure every single time I said it differently. Yeah. I'm sorry, Stefane. Sorry. I'm or so Stephen. sorry. I'm sorry, just all in general. The <laughs> whole thing. <laughs> I, there's. You know what? Let's restart the whole show. Let's you know what? take it back from the top. You're right. Kyle, Chaco What's Taco. Up, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Kennedy writes in, gentlemen. I've said this before. I'll say it again. You two have literally predicted pretty much everything that has come to fruition lately evolving Sony PlayStation. Ooh, kudos. 
And that was my ooey, by the way. With that mm-hmm. being said, I never really been one to jump on the acquisition kick. I play video games, period. No matter the console. God bless. However, Kyle has really got me on the JRPG kick lately, and I'm sort of excited for what Square and Sony could potentially do together. I know this might be a pretty generic question, but do you want Sony to acquire Square? What are your thoughts? Go nuts. Run away with your answers. Thanks, guys. I think I speak for everyone here when I say that we truly appreciate you as content creators and all that you do for this community. Oh, thanks, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Kyle, what do we think? Do, do I want Sony to acquire Square? Yeah. Oh. It'd be fun. <laughs> It'd be fun. That's... But I don't know if I want it, if that right. makes sense. Well, so, you know, I, I was I was listening to, to Jeb Grubb uh, on his show. And I'm sorry, what? Listen to Jeff Grubb. On you said Jeb Grubb. <laughs> yeah, that's his. That's his. Unless, that's, his unless that's just my hearing. His less fa- I don't know. This is less famous brother. Jeb. 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 God bless. Um, but he, he doesn't know for sure. Like, uh-huh. um, I think one of, and I don't want to put words in his mouth. I'm paraphrasing here. Go check out his podcast. It's fantastic as well. Um. But it's along the lines of we're at this point, the acquisition game is coming to a close Um, because of inflation rising in such a way and the looming recession that everybody keeps talking about um, that is coming. A lot of companies might say, you know what, let's kind of just hold on. Uh, Let's 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 hold on to this because it may be a rough couple of months or a year or two of this thing. So let's kind of just hold on to the money we got. So hearing that that makes that makes sense of why playstation maybe won't pull the trigger on this deal and maybe they're just trying to lock down more you know timed exclusives or more exclusives like with final fantasy so yeah that that's also a thing that's running through my brain i'd rather them not buy square enix especially because i feel like without the idos and western developers there it's a little less attractive i feel like and this is coming from the jrpg person yeah. on the show and final fantasy huge fan here i would love having that under the playstation umbrella i would rather than sony use this money to go buy ember labs and like super giant and yeah. from software and like <laughs> do those kinds of things and like <laughs> yeah it's specific developers instead of a full branch yeah i nope. mean yeah we're, we're yeah we're, we're beating that dead horse as well because like to me that's I want that as well, man. Like, pick up these cool indies. Yeah. Pick up, do yeah. what you did with Housemark with with Ember Labs. Like, there are so many awesome developers out there that have excellent visions. I say this all the time. My favorite Xbox acquisitions have been the Ninja Theories and the Obsidians. Mm-hmm. These the double fine, incre- the, the the double fine. These incredibly talented studios that, for some reason, never got the funding or true backing that. We feel like as gamers, they deserved. And now yep. that Ninja Theory has all the money in the world, they could go out there and make Hellblade 2 uh, that is not, you know, restricted by having to have that indie budget like they did with the last game. Mm-hmm. Same with Obsidian. Like, how how hard they were hitting, even with the budget that they had on, on games like Outer Worlds. Um, they are the insomniac of Xbox, I feel like. I really do feel that way, too. Yeah. Double Fine excellent studio mm-hmm. with so many great ip you know psychonauts being one of them you want an original game double fine will bring it to you pretty Absolutely. much every other game is something brand new and so to me and unique and <laughs> goddamn weird so yeah. like those are exciting the activision blizzards aren't really exciting to me i, I blizzard's great and all but i mean they're fixing their culture right now and you're seeing them fight for it, and that's great uh-huh but we know what Blizzard is. We know what Activision is. They've had all the money in the world to do all the the, the games that they have. Yeah, right. And give you your it, Overwatches in, in World of Warcraft. When it came to that one, I was more upset that I was losing machine games. Sure. And when it comes to like Bethesda, it's like I know what Bethesda does. Yeah. These smaller developers, I don't. I, again, I have the idea of what they can do with with that big boat of cash that comes mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. That's what. That that's what gets me excited. So yeah, go out there, 
purchase these smaller teams, invest in them and invest in that, in that, in, in their culture. Yeah. I think that's the way to go. So, you know, Square Enix, I'm not a big JRPG guy. This wouldn't light, you know, you know, light me a flame. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but think about it. It would, it would include what? Uh, deck nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, or maybe not. No, maybe no. not. Maybe not. Maybe not. I take what, that back. I think what it would do, though, we talk about the Kotor remake. Yeah. Being done. You don't have many RPGs. Xbox is locking down Western RPGs pretty darn well. You need to start locking down RPGs. And I think you you practically did it with Final Fantasy 16, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and Final Fantasy 7 remake. Right. So I think that those deals spell a lot more than what we're the fact that we haven't gotten final fantasy seven remake on an Xbox should tell you something mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that that exclusivity is up and who knows next week they can announce it, yeah. but that should tell you something. The fact that final fantasy, you know, seven, uh, was it rebirth, right? Is, is only PS five should tell you something. And also it was a major anniversary for Final Fantasy VII, and for them to not announce that remake part one was coming to Xbox during the anniversary. That's I don't know if it's ever coming at this point. Yeah. There is definitely some fuckery at foot here. Mm-hmm. Um so I would say I think there I think where there's smoke there's fire, I do think that that there is something cooking here. Um mm-hmm. I I, I think it's happening. And I think, like, and I'm just thinking in the business world, what is this defined as like, hey, we're selling off our studios. Like we're, these Western studios are literally just throwing this away. You know, we're making ourselves more lean. And then PlayStation midway through going, yeah, we don't want you anymore. Like, what is the business <laughs> term for a dick move? You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how dare you? This was such a dick move, sir. Like, Literally ghosting them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you up, dot, dot, dot. You know, like, it's, um, yeah. it's, that, that's, that's what, where my mind's at right now. There's so many things that spell something is going on behind the scenes that we, we don't know about. And look, Cloudside yeah. writes in, he goes, hi. Guys, regarding the possible Square Enix takeover, I think it remains the one big takeover that makes the most sense for Sony. It really does. Securing exclusivity on Final Fantasy series alone would be a huge deal and bring in big profits. When you factor in Dragon Quest, Star Ocean, Kyle. Hell yeah, Star Ocean 2, where is it? Where is it? That's three of the biggest JRPG franchises going. Cornering that JRPG market is important considering Microsoft's dominance in the Western RPG. Cloud side. I mean, you look at look at us. We're, we're, we're thinking the same here. Uh, Square Enix have many more series too. Look at Kingdom Hearts, Valkyrie Elysium, and Forspoken. And uh, what is it? The Dino Field Chronicles. It looks dope. Sony could also fund new games like classics like Parasite Eve and make a remake of that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. There's a mm-hmm. lot of opportunity there. And yeah. um, I think, of course, a lot of fixing as well, which, you know, Savoy Prime writes in. If Sony acquires Square Enix, do you think they'll uh, they'll get them to uh, to off this NFT obsession that Square has? I yes. would hope so. Yeah, I think you see a lot of things start. Not saying go like Sony comes in and it's perfectly a OK. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to see them shift of like, yeah, let's focus on getting a. Getting a Dragon Quest out there. Let's focus on getting a Star Ocean out there. Hey, yeah. that, you know, Final Fantasy MMO. That's great. Could you teach us how to monetize that on RIP? Mm-hmm. Things like mm-hmm. that make a lot of sense. A Do lot you of sense. think, Joe? Yeah. For I know nothing. We've been talking about it already, though. Like the eventual September PlayStation Showcase, uh-huh. if it does happen. Sure. Would the announcement of them buying Square Enix be at that show? Do you think no. it's worthy of the show, or would it still be like a blog post beforehand? No, it's before the showcase. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I in mean, August it, sometime. Yeah, in August, a few weeks from now. Because you think of the timeline again. I know nothing, Jon Snow. Uh, <laughs> you, the rumors have been starting since August of last year. We talk about the Microsoft Activision deal. That them being in talks since around the time of the you know the um 
the harassment and toxicity in the, mm-hmm. in the workplace and them crunching to get that deal through by, you know, by literally the new year. So if Sony and Square have been in the works and they've been kind of going, well, we don't want this. We don't need this. We don't need that. Yeah, I, I definitely think that they've been they've been talking about it back and forth. And I think, look, you don't hire a corporate mergers and acquisition manager uh, or you, you don't look for one uh, if you're not looking to make a giant merger yeah. like this happen. Mm-hmm. You just mm-hmm. don't. So I do think something like this is happening, though I prefer it not to because I think I don't want to see publishers be, you know, exclusivized yeah enough of that that's that's it's getting a little silly but yeah does it make sense yeah now xyler writes and i'm sorry if i mispronounce your name but they say hey guys i got a doozy of a question if you had to choose one and only one game from square enix to adapt it into a battle royale why xyler why which would it be and why (laughs) which would it be oh oh easy go for it it's kingdom hearts Oh my gosh. Oh gosh. <laughs> it's just me, my AR. <laughs> Child, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah, I think it's easily Kingdom Hearts. Go woke or go broke. <laughs> <laughs> what would what would the uh if you win at Kingdom Hearts Battle Royale, what, what would it be called? Hmm. It's it's not a victory royale. It's not a winner winner chicken dinner. What it's, is it? Uh, God, what's what's the what's Disneyland's thing? A magical, magical royale. Uh, I, don't I don't like. That. I don't, I don't know. know. This we'll is a good. You you've literally stumped me. Well, and we'll, I thought I'll there's someone yelling in their car radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, one hundred percent there is. Oh God, to infinity and beyond, <laughs> like something I don't know. <laughs> Andy's coming. Uh, yeah. And Andy drops like he's the new character. This is a hero shooter we're making now. It's like Andy's mom <laughs> joins the battle. It's just a disembodied. I was going to say, head. like, the, uh, uh, it's not specifically Square Enix, mm-hmm. but like a Toy Story battle royale. But there is already a, for a game like that. Have you heard about that? No. There's an indie game. I forgot what it was called. But you are literally action figures in a toy store, and it's a battle royale in a toy store. Oh and you're my an action God. figure. I'm going to look it up because yeah, it's pretty cool. Give that. I know there's like one where it's like, yeah, you're a toy in a store or like in, in like a mm-hmm. backyard. I forget what that is, but like that one's been blowing up on, on the Twitter. I think um, I believe it's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I just want, I do want Goofy to just be as toxic as humanly possible. <laughs> just teabagging people mm-hmm. afterwards. Go harsh. That's what you get. You son of a bitch. <laughs> like, <laughs> Goofy. Whoa. Oh, is it high? Hi- it's hypercharge unbox. There you go. There you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Kyle, it's time. Finally. Oh, Ooh. my goodness. That was all the big news this Ooh. week, guys. There was so much. I don't know if I have the energy for the next segment. Oh, no, no. It's good. It's good. Trust me. We got to okay. go fast, though. Ready? Right? Okay. Got to go fast. It's fast. It's fast. It's PlayStation ah! Plus. <laughs> okay. I totally forgot. I was a microphone in front of me. <laughs> Oh, sorry oh. for your, your ears, everybody. That was like Grant Gustin's ah! <laughs> scream. All right, so here's your monthly games for August. Yakuza, Like a Dragon on PS4, PS5. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 on PS4, PS5. Little Nightmares on PS4. And eight Yakuza games will be added to PlayStation Plus this year. This comes from PlayStation Lifestyle. They write, uh, Rebecca Smith writes, Extra and premium subscribers will also be getting Yakuza 0, Kiwami, Kiwami 2 in August as the games are coming into the game catalog. Sony says the remasters of Yakuza 3, 4, 5, along with 6, the Song of Life will also be available for extra and premium subscribers later this year. Famous Seamus writes in the most famous Seamus I've ever met in my whole entire life. Again, take that to the bank. He's got, he got three questions this week because they were all fantastic. All right. And I feel like I've been neglecting Seamus and I, I apologize. Good sir. They write the next PlayStation plus essential games have been revealed. What are your thoughts on them? And which one will you try first? Uh, this is a fantastic list. Might be the best month ever, ever. 
I feel, uh, as terms of all three games, the quality of all three. He had Bloodborne drop, man. With Ratchet, sure. with Ratchet and Clank in 2016? Sure. Come on. But this is this is up there. I mean, Yakuza Like a Dragon is fantastic. I, I've only heard amazing things. Tony mm-hmm. Hawk uh, Pro Skater 1 and 2 Remake is the definitive remake before FF7, I feel That's like. True. That's true. And I've heard nothing but fantastic things about Little Nightmares. Yeah. 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 I know a lot of folks that love Little Nightmares. That's yeah. why I'm diving into that one first. Yep. Um, and they also write, also, the Yakuza games are going to PS Plus as well. Will this make you guys try out the series? It actually will. It yeah. actually will. Yeah. I've always loved watching streamers play uh, Yakuza because of how goofy and crazy and wild it is. Yep. Uh, it's cool that they are coming to the PS Plus um, program. Yeah, absolutely. It was a little weird how they rolled it out, though. Right. It's over the course of of uh of this year yeah and i before you read it i thought it was like some of them were on one tier and some of them were on the other tier and that is actually true so three four and five are on only premium so yeah so that is like why that's weird yeah it is weird was it because and i'm not a not a yakuza fan though these are remastered onto the ps4 these are original like ps3 ish games is that why Maybe. Whatever it is, it's a bad excuse. But yeah, listen, I, I I like that they're getting the the plus side. I'm not like trying to like spin doctor this because that's a bad that's bad. Yeah, You're holding those three behind the barrier. But what I do like is that the 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 quality of the essential games have only gone up, and I want to know how long that actually lasts yeah. until they get lazy with it. Is it ever going to be as bad as games with gold? Who knows? Well, no, never. I don't think that. It, can't, it really can't get any worse. It's yeah. like, how about this? I'll pay more for gold if you don't give me those games. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Microsoft. You know you what? Don't give me anything and I'll give you money. That's just, the expectation. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. Something just happened. Uh-oh. 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 Everything are you okay? okay? Everything are all right? Are we still recording? Yeah. Yeah, we are. All right. Good. 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 Zancaster, you're still alive? Okay, I, I, cool. It's live on my end. Uh, again, Windows really wanted me to know that there may be a virus. <laughs> so, like, dude, you're not taking this seriously. <laughs> Who cares about Yakuza, your hard drive, <laughs> all your pornography? It's getting uh, insane. You know? <laughs> it's a joke. We have fun here. Sorry, parents yeah. that listen to this with their kids. Um, here's another one. Kyle, have you seen this? Have you heard about this? PlayStation Indies. Development hardware loan program. This comes from Greg Rice. I think he's a VP of Indies over there. Or, or, sorry, PlayStation Creators, which does a whole lot of indie work. Um, he writes, it is our continued goal to make PlayStation the best place to publish and play games in all shapes and sizes. Over the past few years, we've been thrilled to support our external external publishing partners with features on indie spotlight events, indie montage videos, and on our social channels. Dedicated space for PlayStation Indies on PlayStation Dot com and have been working to reduce the time it takes to get new developer onboarded on PlayStation. That last one's huge. That one last one is huge. Okay, cool. Yeah. As such, we are always striving to lower the barrier of entry to improve the process of publishing on PlayStation. We're pleased to announce the new initiative that will make it easier for partners to hop in, get started, and start developing for PlayStation. The newly licensed PlayStation game publishers and developers will be eligible to receive one PlayStation 5 dead kit and one PlayStation 5 testing kit, complements of SIE, subject to applicable terms and conditions apply. And then with the, you know, asterisks and then, you know, the whole, like, it may give you hives. Uh, (laughs) So who is eligible? We want to welcome new voices, new ideas, new experiences from game development and publishing industry to sign up at PlayStation today at PlayStation.com. So that's partners. Welcome to the Indie Minute on (laughs) the show. It's here. It's here. You you got your wish, Trellis. Uh, This is awesome. Yeah. Um, Very clearly. We all knew, we talked about on here, PlayStation needs to do a better job with their indie front. Yeah. And seeing, like before I mentioned, like Shuhei doing like a 30-minute play playthrough of Stray uh, with the devs on, on YouTube is great. Um, branching out from 
the next 30 minutes for dropping a new indie or whatever on Twitter. That's great, but I, I want a little bit more. The biggest thing, though, and being at PAX and talking to indie developers, the biggest thing we're like, well, what about PlayStation? Because that is always the one that is noticeably absent on all their marketing materials. Mm. And they always just keep saying their onboarding is so hard. No one is there to answer our questions. Fair. It is so hard to just get our foot in the door to have our game seen and so we just give up and nintendo and microsoft are like yeah sure come on over so to see greg rice say like yeah we are lowering that barrier of entry we're trying to improve the process the the reduce the time it takes to get people on board on playstation means nothing but good things when it comes for playstation I- uh, indies er, yeah it- that's it that's your minute oh okay <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and, and you're like, not even a fight. All right. <laughs> Mid thought. Okay, good. Listen, the when the buzzer one. sounds, I know. <laughs> I know. That's it. That's all I got. No, you're totally right. And honestly, Kyle, um, you know, they could be better because I know with Xbox, uh, oh, yeah, you're really an Xbox fanboy in disguise. Like, you could literally turn your Xbox into a dev kit, I think. Oh, that's okay. cool. Yeah, so like they could be a bit better, but you're right. This is a really good step in the right du- direction. I, I, in, for an example, just one of the devs that we talk, I won't name the game because I don't want to get anybody in trouble. Um, one of the devs at pe- this year's PAX we were talking to about PlayStation, and he was just like, they wouldn't even listen to me. Oof. It, it, it was just, it, it was so hard to, uh, you know, get seen or heard or get in touch with somebody. And within the last couple of months, their game is now coming to PlayStation. That's awesome. So they are listening. They are working. They are striving to be better, which is all I want because indies are awesome. And I want PlayStation to highlight them more. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Kyle. Next on the list here, Returnal PC version will likely have Steam Deck support, but still is it confirmed. This comes also from Rebecca Smith over at PS Lifestyle. A Steam page under the codename Oregon is causing a lot of excitement. That page has been updated to state the game will be getting Steam Deck support. But while many are convinced that the page is referring to the PC version of Returnal, neither Sony nor Housemark has actually confirmed the game is coming to PC. But the NVIDIA link says it is, so let's be honest guys it's happening it's a coming and speaking uh, of leaks again that thing is uh that's a pretty big leak it's a leak that keeps on leaking and my steam deck now is gonna have spider-man or eternal the ps vita died so that we may have a steam deck (laughs) and steam stickers whatever their equivalent of trophies Mm -hmm. all right kyle that's been all the flash news now are you holding on to something just my water for now, because the movie's all the way yeah, over there. I'm yeah, not grabbing it. Yeah. All that extra work. Prepare the drop. You are the latest deals and deals coming to the PlayStation storefront in the week of the 25th of July. Football T drops Ooh. on PS5 and PS4 on the 25th. What's this? Uh-oh. Oh, God. It's one of these. I don't know. We'll find plats. out. Uh, the 26th of July. Mozart Requiem on PS4. What is this? The, the ghost of Mozart <laughs> haunting <laughs> Beethoven. It's like, I don't know. Were they the same time? Whatever. He's haunting them. Uh, Multiverses. Uh, yeah. Football T, uh, three minute platinum. God, I hate this. Multiverses on PS5 and PS4. It rolls out for free for everyone. I'm hearing nothing but amazing things. Like, this could actually be the Smash Brothers competitor. Like, this is the closest thing that it's gotten to the crown. Or the throne, as the kids say. I, I saw the image of LeBron James in the game LeBron doing the, the very uh, famous thing where he's at midcourt complaining about a call with his hand straight out. <laughs> no way. In the game, I was like, oh, that's cool. I love that. That's so awesome. I cannot wait to play this this weekend. That is for sure. I think I'm going to be Arya because I think she may be a Link clone. And Link is my favorite. Ooh. Yeah. Uh Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town, uh, PS5, July 27th, Arsonist's uh, Haven. Heaven. Uh, oh, Heaven, sorry. Uh, PS5 and PS4. Path of Titans, uh, PS5 and PS4. Uh, Loot Light comes out Ooh. on July 28th on PS5. And on the 29th of July, we get Digimon. Uh, sorry, what did I say? Like a Jamaican accent there. Did, Digimon. 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 J- Digimon. Yeah, see, I always, like, it it gives me the reggae vibe. I don't know. Survive on PS4. Sorry for Digimon uh, 
<laughs> Digi people of all kinds, shapes, and colors. I'm sorry, Jijimin. <laughs> sorry, I watched the first episode when I was a kid. I was like, this isn't Pokemon. And I chose Pokemon because that was the better pick. And I'm sorry. Uh, Loot Light truth. sounds cool. Oh, yeah? What is Loot it? Light is a roguelike arcade in which you can embody different heroes to try to recover their stolen treasures Ooh. through a huge area full of secrets, hidden paths, and kinds of weapons that will make your playthrough easier. It looks like a old school Hades. Okay. A little Sh- bit. Shoot like me a, a like, an this. N- like an NES style. Okay. Roguelike game? It looks like a lot of fun. I like it. Now, Kyle, it's time for our favorite segment. It's time for the Sony Pony Express. This motorcycle guy, he's late. (laughs) Motorcycle guy. An hour ago, we told you to (laughs) show. That's better. (laughs) Katie. Katie writes in, hey, guys. As always, I hope you're doing well. My question this week is similar to last week's, but this time it's all about bromance. It's pretty simple. Who is the best bromance in gaming? Who is the snake to your uh, Otacon? Who is the shepherd to your Valk? Shepherd to your... Oh, oh, Valkarian. Valkarian. I can never pronounce his name. Sorry. No, I got you. The ratchet to your clank. All right. this um, This is an easy one for me, Kyle. Is it just the jack to my Daxter? <laughs> no, it's actually an Xbox thing. Ah, uh, okay. Marcus and Dom. Uh, that is a I'm powerful. Gonna pre- I'm going to pretend I know the power behind that. Oh, my God. I <sighs> Gears 3, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. That's a bromance. That's a bromance. And, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it hurts. It's, uh, it's a it's a beautiful bromance. Another PlayStation one. Some people here's hate the it. thing: a bromance so strong. <laughs> you named your like Marcus names his kid JD. The middle initial is Dom. Phoenix. Oh, that's cool. I love that. You know, you don't um, get that. Mm. <laughs> that fuck back- fucks <laughs> me up. Sorry, <laughs> it bounces me this time. Every time, every time, man, it gets me. It Bring it back me. to PlayStation, a one that I don't think everyone loved. Uh, Zeke and Cole from Infamous. Yeah, no, I hated that one. <laughs> I know you do. Zeke uh, they get, the shit they get, me. they get better. Zeke okay. gets better. Right. Um, I'm trying to think other of other like buddy combos on PlayStation that either Katie hasn't already said or. Oh, I'm sorry. It, Nate and Sully. Oh, I'm, my God. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> is that a bromance? But more is that like, like a nurturing uh, mentor? Like, yeah, mentor. Uh, that's a good point. Eh, no, they seem like they have fun. Sure. Maybe, uh, maybe Sam and Sully. No, they kind of rip each other all enough. the time, but it's not enough, right? Yeah, enough, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot damn. What about, about, what, about, what about Jin and the, the fanboy guy? What was it? Nori or Noki? <laughs> Noki. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, I snorted. My apologies. Yeah. I, I, th- I think Sully, uh, Sully and Drake. Sully, Jack sense. and Daxter. Jack and Daxter. Yeah. I, I still, for some reason, say Banjo-Kazooie. Sure. I don't know why, but my N64-ness just showed there. Yeah. 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 I mean, Katie, I think, named the biggest one. It's Shepard and, and Garrus. Yeah. That's 100% the bromance end. And over. honestly. Uh, I mean, other than, obviously, Marcus and Dom. Male Shepard should be able to fuck. What just happened? Oh, sorry. I, I thought I believed. You, you, you completely just shut off. <laughs> Male <laughs> Shepard and Garrus should be able to <laughs> That's what I was trying to okay. say. Okay. All right. Yeah, they okay. should be able to go to Bone Zone. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Just saying. But okay. yeah, Garrus. He's fam. He's fam. Yeah, I'm not marrying Garrus. Garrus is my best man. I'm oh, yeah. marrying probably Miranda. Oh, she oh God. Why does sleep. it sound like you're doing a, uh, a kiss, marry? Uh, <laughs> An F, uh, marry, kill? No, yeah, no, no. Yeah. Listen, if this this is not a Mass Effect podcast or else, <laughs> I feel like that's 
if this was like a, a Bioware podcast, I feel like that's like half of their episodes. That's, you know? that's uh, I think, I like how you have to start the show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Set the table with a little bit. <laughs> Una writes, hey guys, hope you're doing well today. My question this week is how do you guys deal with uh, when you're in a gaming rut, as I would call it? After finish, finishing up Sky the Third last week, I was in a limbo as to what I want to sink my teeth into next. And after trying to dig into some games, I decided on Collar X Malice as a nice breather from all the JRPGs. I'm thinking my next game after this is going back to Yakuza Like a Dragon to get that plat on PS5. Ooh, wee, you in a goddamn. And also need to get back into Dragon Age 2 because I'm getting that itch to sink another hour, uh, or sorry, to sink an hour into it in the weekend while trying to decide. So I guess I throw the ball to you guys. When you're in a gaming limbo, what helps you decide your next game? I'm the wrong person to ask because I am currently fighting through a, a rut. That's right. Hardcore. I'm back um, in. I'm back in. You just need a palate cleanser. You just need to go, you know what? I'm doing this thing and just go for it. And, and that thing was Stray. I finally yeah. started Stray, and that's really getting me out of my baseball rut. As it Absolutely. Will. Absolutely. Yeah. I platinum Stray uh, over the weekend. I got that hard trophy first try, by the way. <laughs> You're... You're a real piece of work. You don't need to brag like that. You don't need to brag like that. <laughs> they probably patched it to make it easier. Um, <laughs> right, don't take away from my accomplishment. How dare you? No, it has to, or else I feel like I wasted 45 minutes to get that platinum. Okay. Uh, really quick before you continue. Yeah. I, I was. I, I'm not familiar with the game Yuna was playing called Collar Cross Malice. Mm, yeah. Here's the description. It sounds okay. rad. Okay. A dangerous shadow organization launches a campaign of fear and violence in the city of Shinjuku, pushing society to the brink of chaos. As a young police officer tasked with restoring order, you become the target of an attack and have a poisonous collar attached to your neck. Oh, shit. With the situation spiraling out of control and time running out, five mysterious strangers appear to aid you in your quest for the truth. Ah, damn. That's an awesome description. Yeah, all right. (laughs) That's cool. It's like it's like Saw. Yeah, it, it does look like a visual novel, like a adventure game. Nice. Um, That's cool. But yeah, like I, so, I just played Stray, and then that that got me go. You know, let me just let me go play something I normally wouldn't. So mm-hmm. I've been playing, um, was it Infamous First Light, and Kyle. Oh, that's awesome! I'm about to plot that game. I'm on. Yeah. The, I'm on the precipice of that plot. So, I, I need to do that. I don't have the plot in that one. I love that game. Yeah, it's just a little bit of grind. But again, we'll have more to discuss. Patreon.com slash PS Trophy Room. It is the road to greatness this week. So we'll, we'll be talking a lot about my thoughts on that game. But, uh, really quickly, yeah. though, because I didn't, I forgot to mention it during Go Prepare the Drop. Um, shout out to the PlayStation ad for, uh, this morning about Roller Drome. Have you seen it? No. I've heard good things. So, yeah, same. I am very excited. Uh, Roller Drums coming out August 16th. Mm-hmm. And the advertisement, it's like an old school like movie action poster. It says Roller Drum. Play it like it's 1979. And 1979 is the price if you're a PS Plus member. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh that's I good. love that. That's really that's good. good. That's a good <laughs> singer right there. So yeah, I just I, or I just like embrace the rut and just like watch movies or yes. spin shows and exactly. You just uh, want to don't make yourself fall back in love with gaming. Just let it come back to you. Can I tell you that did backfire on me though, Joe? Why? I I was like, yeah, let me just watch something that I I yeah. know I should watch something you've told me to watch. So I watched the first episode of Euphoria. And I was like, oh, this is heavy. Let me go back to games. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I can handle this right now. I know. I know. That makes lot. me so fearful of my girls when they get older. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Zendaya. Oh, boy. Acts. Oh. If she doesn't get another award, another Emmy, right? Is it? Yeah. This year? Oh, yeah. Man, they're hell to pay. Hell oh, to pay. Wonderfully uh, acted. Because it's a funny surprise. This is, it starts as a PlayStation show, and then it ends as a Zendaya Stan yeah. podcast. Um, well, when's the Zendaya game coming out? You know, <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Fifty Zendayas drop into the world. <laughs> oh, I don't know. How that, I can't do the music to that. 
the music oh of God. Euphoria. I thought of an awful battle royale. Oh God, go for it! Spoilers for No Way Home. Oh no, it's just Zendaya is falling, <laughs> <laughs> and the last one to catch Zendaya <laughs> is the winner. I thought you were gonna say like fifty op maze. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, M Nine Prime writes. Sony Pony Express question here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what movie really bothers you in a way they depict video games or consoles? Ever since I was a kid and I watched Rumble in the Bronx, the kid Danny plays a Game Gear with no game in it. To this day, I remember this gaming inaccuracy, and it still bothers me that nobody on set could correct it. Nobody oh, knows how to play a game right. Oh, my God. Nobody. And even worse. Yeah. Even worse. On the same vein, because I I know where I you're going with this. I can't name a specific thing. But when I see a PlayStation game being played with an Xbox controller mm-hmm. or what well, it, uh, it makes me want to say a Nintendo game, oh, it blows my mind. And then you the, point it out, you're like, that you can't play Gears of War on a PlayStation 3. Yeah, and no. then like like someone in the like everybody there, in the room just turns to you like who the who the hell there, cares? There was one that I do remember. Uh, shout out to Heroes on yeah. NBC. Game deserves so much more. I believe in the first season, what the the one little kid uh, in the in the show was playing Heavenly Sword PS3, but he was using a different controller that wasn't a PlayStation <sighs> controller. I'm pretty sure, and it it was just like a whole bunch of this kind of moving side to side yeah. and acting like you were the character. It's like, I oh, hate that. I it. hate when they jostle back and forth stop like they're super it. in it. I hate when they don't hold the goddamn triggers like this. Like I uh-huh. hate that. Uh-huh. I hate it so. So damn much. And yeah. I know I held an Xbox controller on a PlayStation podcast. But I just did it. But <laughs> I hate it. I hate yeah, it. It's bad. So much. Or like when they don't move the sticks. Like, or like they're moving them too much and you hear it. Like, that's not mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. you're not wrestling the goddamn controller. No, you're, you're not. just pressing buttons. You're not. You know, I've never, unless I'm playing VR, I've never like duck, dodge, dive, and Dodge, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, while yeah. playing a goddamn video Unless game. Unless there are like gyro motion controls. I'm not moving my controller as I'm exactly. going through the level. No, no, no. That said, there is only one movie that's ever got it right and depicted it accurately. Uh, Shout Gamer out. With Gerard Butler? <laughs> Go to hell. <laughs> Shout out to Avengers. What is it? Uh oh. Which one? Infinity War, I want to say. They, what game were they playing in? Infinity no, no, no. War? It's Endgame. It's Endgame. Where they walk in to Thor, oh, where Thor, he's yeah, been, yeah. and you see Korg. New Master 69. <laughs> yeah. Korg playing Fortnite, and like he's he's playing it all right, right? But the best thing he, he did, which is the most accurate thing, is like, hey, Thor, Thor, this guy over here called me a dickhead. It's <laughs> 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 the best. That uh, is the best. That's the best represent, and that's the peak. It'll never get better than that. I always, I always do this whenever we talk about. Thank God it came up quickly. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen this. I don't know if you listening have seen this movie before. But every single time video games and movies get brought up, I think of the Frankie Muniz classic. Oh God. <laughs> Stay alive. Have you, have you ever seen Stay Alive? I've never seen a Frankie Muniz Stay? classic in my life. Let me let me read you the description. Oh God! For a group of teens, the answer to the mysterious death of their old friend lies within the world of an online video game based on the true story of an ancient noblewoman known as the Blood Countess. The tagline is: "You die in the game, you die for real," and that is the premise for this movie. If you die in the game. How you die in the game is how you die in real life. So they're pretty much like, we don't have the rights for Freddy Krueger. So we're just going to let's video, video game fi it. <laughs> it stars Frankie Muniz, uh, Milo Ventimiglia. Okay. Sophia Bush. All right. Bunch of other people, but it's wild. Fair. That was, that was a good <laughs> rental in high school. All right. Last question. Comes from Colin. They write in. Anyway, y'all asked for a question, so how about this? 
You walk into a bar, you see Crash, Jack, Ratchet, Nathan Drake, Kratos, Ellie, and Aloy, who are you buying a drink for? And when the inevitable bar brawl breaks out, who are you rooting for? I am buying Kratos a goddamn drink and being as nice as humanly possible to him. Okay. Not where I'm going with. When the brawl the brawl breaks out, it's a goddamn bloodbath. He's the only one <laughs> living. He's killing everybody. Yeah, I can see that. My answer for both, though, is also the same character. Okay. I'm buying Ellie a drink. She deserves one. She needs one. it. <laughs> she really needs also, it. Also, Ellie is the Arya Stark of this bar brawl. Oh. She's going to sneak around and just shiv everybody and walk out. <laughs> That's true. She's oh. been through it. I, she was the Ellie prince was... that was promised? Yeah. 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 See that? You see that as a Game of Thrones I don't reference. get that. That's a Game of Thrones reference. Oh, listen. I, me and my memory recall with TV shows that I haven't Fair. seen in a while, it's gone. Yeah. But yeah, Kratos, for sure. Nobody's making it out alive. Who, it's just great. Who is the one that they all turn to and be like, it, "You're you're out first, and why is it crash?" Sorry, crash. I love you, but you're just a man in a costume with a <laughs> megaphone. He's, like, he's just trying to run, <laughs> but he can't move diagonals. He's, he's trying to get to the door. Spin move. He's just exactly. staying in place. I could just see Kratos just grabbing him <laughs> by the throat <laughs> when he does that. Oh God. Just shoving a lump pop. of fruit down his throat and be like, eat this and eat this boy <laughs> oh man everybody that has been the trophy room a playstation podcast but before we go kyle is there anything you'd like to spotlight before we get on out of here as always i like to spotlight myself mr k step on twitter and everywhere else psn all the things uh go find all the indie news coverage we're doing at 61indie.com that's s-i-x-o-n-e-i-n-d-i-e uh 61 indie cast on podcast services elsewhere um yeah it's a good time if you want to know more about indie games go check it out if you're listening to this on the day of uh the dropping of the episode Mm -hmm. thursday july 28th uh mike and a few of the other six one indie folks are going to be live reacting to the Ooh. annapurna showcase Ooh. uh twitch.tv slash six one indie i believe at 3 p.m eastern nice. so uh go hang out and watch hopefully some cool annapurna stuff yeah absolutely absolutely and you can find me over at mr babbitt you can find the show over at ps trophy room on twitter and again you know, if you want to win a copy of The Last of Us Part 1, you're like, I'm not going to spend $70. I'm going to make you do it. Uh, guess what? You can rate us five stars either on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, and you are entered to win a copy of The Last of Us Part 1. If you already have given a five-star review on either platform and you've set a uh, submission in before, don't worry. You're in a Google Sheet of mine. You're good. You're entered. If you're a patron, you're good. You're entered. And if you're a patron and you've done a review, guess what? You're entered twice. That's Ooh, right. boy. You get double entries just because you're a patron. So look at that. And so, yeah, rate us five stars. It really does help us out. Please say nice things because <laughs> it really does boost our confidence a great deal, especially when you're going through the throes of it. I was a bit this week. And again, like Sean's comment, it really did just make mm-hmm. my day. Mm-hmm. So. With all that said, with all that out of the way, everybody, we love you. Keep your wits about you. Keep hunting. Keep playing PlayStation. See you guys. Bye. Love you.